I'm River Rube, and welcome to my gun kingdom. Well, we're back with another SHTF uh, scenario video. And again, we're joined with uh, our good friend, Jeff. And uh, we appreciate him being on the channel as always. And uh, Jeff, we're gonna be doing something different uh, today. We're gonna take you a little bit out of your comfort zone okay. of the, the AR-15. <laughs> now, you know, the last time we did a video uh, with Jeff, um, he showed us his AR-15 that he had. And that's what he has for a SHTF scenario. But today we're going to let him uh, zero in a prism scope um, with the AK-47. Here we go. All right, so why don't you tell us about this trigger pull gauge that you have here, Jeff? All right, this is a, it's a Wheeler. It's a well-known brand. Um, and this is their digital gauge. So uh, it's, uh, they have one that's spring-loaded with, you know, with the outside gauge on it. But this okay. is digital, it records everything digitally. Um, and you can save them up over, you can do three or four or five in a row and then save them. Nice. So you can do an average and figure out what it is where you, where you put your finger on the trigger. Okay. So um, it's very simple to operate. Um, cost, uh, the digital one is uh, more expensive, it's, tw it's $56. Um, and um, there are one that's not digital, the spring-loaded one, that's about 29 Okay, but this one's 56. This one's 56. Well, that's it, not a bad it's price, a really. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. horrible at all. So, yeah. um, and it's got uh, several buttons that gives you different modes, and I, I haven't used that yet, so I'm not sure about it. And then it lets you clear everything so that everything starts with zero. Nice. Now let's show everybody that. I don't know if you can pick that up or not, but it does show all zeros there. And how many does it hold in memory? Uh, I think it holds 12 in memory. Okay, all righty. Yeah. Great. Is it pretty accurate? Uh, it, it seems to be. Okay. I mean, I've, I've done it on my uh, my 1022, and that's that sh it, it shows six ounces for the pull, and that's what it's supposed to be. So. Well, I'm glad you brought that along. Um, we're going to do that here in a little bit, and we're going to, before we uh, move into the... Uh, the uh, shooting this um, firearm here, this AK-47. Now, if, if you notice, we put on a prism scope and, and Jeff is gonna zero the prism scope in today. And now, if we compare a prism scope to a red dot scope, um, in an SHTF scenario, the red dot scope is going to be very limited because it takes a battery to operate. One nice thing about um, red dot scope, Jeff, that I like is there's no magnification. Right. So when we talk about leaving both eyes open in a, in a scenario like, you know, the, this is a combat uh, gun up, up to 300 meters. Um, it's a very effective. It can go out to a thousand meters, um, if you, but you'd have to play around with the, the sight adjustment and everything else. But this is really a combat gun under 300 meters. But what I like about the uh, the red dot scope is, like I said, it doesn't it doesn't have any magnification to it, but it does require a battery. And if you forget to turn it off, this is one where you have to actually remember to turn it off. And if you forget to do that, then your battery's dead. Then the then the scope is is worthless. So what we want to do uh, for an SHTF um, scope for a combat rifle is we want to move to a prism scope now. This one does come with a battery and it has a green and, and blue um, light on it if you want to use the illumination. Okay, but if the illumination, once you end up losing your battery, you can go to the etched in radical that the prism scope has. And that's what this prism scope has over the, the red, red dot. dot right. Yeah, all right, so we've decided to put this prism scope on this on this rifle and um, and this is a midwest industry side rail mount in case you're interested in what type of mount that we're using and this will fit the warsar but it will not fit the zastava m70 ak-47 so zastava makes their own side rail mount so you have to buy one specifically for zastava if you have that rifle and i have one of those 
AK-47, I have one of those Zastavas too. Now, Jeff, do you do you have an AK-47 in your arsenal? I, I do not. Okay. Uh, nope, I just have the AR-15. Uh, and, and, and River, does this have any magnification to it, this scope? Yeah, that's a 4X uh, fixed. So you can't adjust it any higher than that. That's as high okay. as it goes. Now, some people will be able to leave both eyes open. I don't know. We'll, we'll try it we'll with try you it, today, yeah. okay? But for me, I still have to close one eye. And I think it's because of the way I was raised to close one eye sure. with the scope. So that's, that's the only difference for me. But um, I would like to leave both eyes open for I sure. I noticed this has a sight on top, a regular sight on yeah, top. Yeah, that's a, that's a um, fallback. You know, if, if for some reason, like if your scope would ever get cloudy or you got snow or ice on it, uh, you could always fall back to the, the one, the, the fixed up there at the top. Oh, I see, that's adjustable. Is that adjustable yep. windage too? Yep, there's adjustable windage and elevation. Excellent, excellent. All right. Yep. And those are fairly inexpensive scopes. You can pick them up for around 50 to $60 at the time this video is being made. So it's a UUQ scope, okay? And, uh, but it looks very tactical, and I'm glad I put it on the gun. Now, I, I do have a half-inch riser, and I did put that on last night. And it raised up the scope a little bit too high. I think it's because of the way the stock is. Um, you know, for faster acquisition, I like mm -hmm. it to be raised up as high as possible. So I took the riser off and I just mounted onto this Midwest Industry side mount rail, and it works okay. We'll see how it feels to you today, but we're going to use the lead sled uh, to side it in. We have the GoPro with us, and uh, so we'll be able to get instant feedback with the targets down there. Now, let's go on to the mags here. Now, YouTube makes it uh, pretty difficult for us creators to um, bring different firearms on the channel and we have to make sure when we choose magazines that they're not 30 rounds or more. Okay, so I'm kind of glad that, that it worked out that way because I went onto the internet and I was shopping for something that will fit the Warsaw. All, all I have at home are the 30 round magazines. Right. So I couldn't bring those on YouTube. So I thought I've got to do some shopping in order to bring the Warsaw on for people to see. Okay, so I found this Hungarian tanker. And it's steel. And this thing is uh, solid. It, it's unbelievable. It's really thick. I mean, it weighs a lot more. And this is a polymer, 5.56. Five, but it weighs so much more than the polymer does. But the durability for an SHTF scenario, I like the steel. Yeah, you're sure you're going to get some surface rust on the steel. But if you can, just keep it wiped off as, as good as possible. And they're a little bit heavier than a, than a polymer. But, you know, if you would drop these, you're going to have campfires going on in SHTF scenario. And if you would drop this in the fire for some reason or somehow that would happen, these are going to burn up, okay? Right. And, and, I mean, polymer is just a fancy word for plastic, you know. Um, so they do catch on fire and they will melt, okay, at a certain temperature. So, and if you got a good fire going... You know, and if you drop it in there, your gun's sitting next to it, and the whole gun falls in, and all of a sudden your magazine Good burns mess, up. Yeah. So you can always fall back on these steel ones. So this is a really nice magazine. We're going to try it out where the Warsaw. Now, one thing about the Warsaw and the Zastava, anything that will fit, any magazine that will fit the Warsaw will fit the Zastava, but not vice versa. Huh. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. What do you think of these AK-47s, Jeff? Would yep. you ever want to consider putting one in your arsenal? Yeah, I would. I, I, I want to obviously. I want to shoot it first to see what it feels like. But um, you know, I, when I when I look at it, it just looks so small to me. Yeah, yeah. and, and maybe it, maybe that's the whole purpose. It's easy to carry around, easy to transport. It is pretty lightweight. It weighs around six six point five pounds, so it, it is pretty <coughs> light. That's without ammo. But I, I was really pleased to find the uh, Midwest Industries. Uh, it, the Midwest Industries side mount rail um, has a lock on it, where a lot of other ones don't. That might be cheaper than the Midwest Industries, but. With that lock, I was willing to pay more money, and it, and it also has really good feedback, yep. uh, good reviews uh, on the Midwest Industries 
So if you have a Warsaw, that's definitely the way you want to go with that. And I'm sure this mount would fit other AK-47s out there. You just had to do a little research before you buy one. But Jeff, I bought this when I was pretty young. Uh, it was when they first were introduced into the United States. Um, I picked one up right away, and it was only like two hundred dollars. Really? Yeah, at the time <laughs> I bought it. I don't know what a Warsaw goes for now. If you know what one goes for, leave us a comment down below and let us know what what they cost brand new now. But uh, yeah, for the you know, and, it, and it's a solid receiver. Um, you know, it'll hold up for a long time. But, uh, well, we've gone over everything here, Jeff, and what do you say we start shooting it and uh, let you zero it in? All right. We'll we're at 50 shot. yards today, so we'll give it a shot. Okay. All right? Great. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good to be here. Okay. We're going to find out what the trigger pull is on this AK-47. All right, we're set at zero now. We're going to try to put this on the center of the trigger and slowly pull it back. And that's showing two pounds, 0.15 ounces. Get on the center of the trigger again, pull straight back. That's showing 2.1. See what we got here. Safety's off. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Oh, you know what? This is loose. No wonder. Oh, uh-oh. So you push in the lock to release it. Now there's a tension screw right here. Yeah. That's better. That's level now, isn't it? I think so. Okay. It's pretty tight now, so. Yep. All right. All right. How many more you got? Three or two? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I got two, maybe three. Here we go. The elevation is good now. All we need to do is come over to the left. You ready? Yep. Safety off. Here we go. Oh, you're safety off. 
first. There you go. Here we go. Now let's go over. We're still right? Yep. Here we go. I'll go out and move it to 50 yards. All right. Here we go. All right. Yep. Safety's off. Here we go. Safety off. Here we go. There. Safety off. Here we go. Well, Jeff, there's a lot of AK-47 lovers out there, yeah. and uh, I'm sure they're they're really happy to hear your thoughts on this rifle and everything. And so, what's your uh, what's your thoughts? I, I enjoyed shooting it, but you know what? It kicks a lot more than in the AR-15. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, so if I was gonna, uh, you know, if I was gonna carry it, I'd probably stick to my AR-15 only because I'm it's light and I'm used to it. And, okay. And the recoil is. Uh, favorable for an old guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you think of the prism scope? Uh, I enjoyed the prism scope. It was easy to shoot through. I, I just can't personally keep both eyes open. Okay. I, you know, all my life I've been shooting by closing my left eye and... Yeah, it's, and it's all the way we're raised, Jeff. I think that's what it amounts down to is, is that. And I was raised the same way. You know, yeah. whenever I shot a rifle, uh, my father always told me to close the left eye. Yeah. And um, so I think if you're raised with both eyes open, open it might make a difference. But this is a 4x fixed uh, prism scope, and you should be able to adjust to it if you practice, maybe you know. And I'll have to practice too and see if I can shoot with both eyes open. Yeah. But um, and also uh, we learned something at the start of this, and we've done this before in my, on my channel too, is to start out at 25 yards. Uh, the maximum, but we brought it into like I think almost 25 feet. Yeah. In, in order to get it on paper, um, and then also we had a problem with with the mount, and it's not the it's not the mount's fault. It's my fault that I didn't tighten it down. It, it's when I first put it on, it seemed like it was secure, but as we started shooting in the recoil uh, from the recoil that it was getting. Uh, the mount loosened up, so we had to take it off and, and readjust that. But after we did that, then it stayed on there fine. Uh, we probably shot another 12 rounds, yeah. right? And it, and it didn't move, so that's one thing you have to really make sure of. Make sure you get a side rail mount that actually has a lock on it, and that's gonna help you out a lot. And make sure you get it adjusted just right. So it might take you a couple times to, to do it, but it will it will pay off in the end, right, Jeff? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, once once that was all fixed, it shot beautifully. Okay. Yeah. So did you try shooting with both eyes open? 
I did. Okay. And, and I just, I, it wouldn't stay open for me. Okay. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd start, and all of a sudden, like this. It's right just, before, it's just a reflex. Before I pull the trigger, it? my yeah. left eye goes closed. It's, it's like reflex. my finger was attached yeah. to my eye. I don't. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I include the AK-47 in my arsenal for SHTF, and I hope you do too out there. But if you like this video, make sure you click that like button for us down there. Subscribe to the channel. There's always more stuff coming up. And leave us a comment down below. Share it with your friends, but I appreciate you watching. Thank you.